Anyway, good morning. I'm going to look at Hezekiah today. And uh, actually, uh, Martin Smith asked me to do Hezekiah, so I hope he's going to listen to this. An interesting character, which is from 2 Kings 21.6. Before we begin, we begin let's just have, let's a, have a moment of quiet. And let's, and let's just, just pray. pray. Just take a moment to just bring your own prayers before God this morning. Lord Jesus, we thank you and praise you that you are a mighty God. We pray now, Lord, that we will see breakthrough in this nation where so much is going on at the moment. Pray, Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit that you will, Lord, just make a difference to lives. Lives may be changed by the power of your Spirit, Lord, and help us, Lord, to be people who are concerned for those around us. I pray, Lord, for all those who have been poorly at this time, and pray for David Stevens, pray for Richard Dominty. We pray, Lord Jesus, for all those that have just been unwell and are struggling at this time. We ask, Lord, the power of your Holy Spirit on them. Pray for healing on them, Lord, and for all those that we're concerned about. Draw close to them, we pray, Lord Jesus. Help us to be movers and shakers. People who make a difference. And draw us together, Lord, that we really are the community of God, the family that we should be. Help us to be sensitive to each other, Lord, and refresh us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So I've got my sidekick today, because Paul's not around, in Bryony. Bryony, it's so yeah. good to see you here. Um, the reluctant helper, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> but she's, she's going to have something to say. But she's going to read for me now, aren't you? going to read um, uh, 2 Kings 21 to 6. Yes. Off you go. In those days, Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to him and said, This is what the Lord says. Put your house in order, because you are going to die. You will not recover. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, remember O Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion and have done what is good in your eyes. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Before Isaiah had left in the middle court, the word of the Lord came to him. Go back and tell Hezekiah, the leader of the people, this is what the Lord, the God of your father David says. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will heal you. On the third day from now, you will go up to the temple of the Lord. I will add 15 years to your life, and I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Azariah. I will defend this city for my sake and for the sake of my servant David. Thanks, Bryony. Um, it's a great reading. It's a great character, actually, to get to speak on today. I really enjoyed doing these characters because... I don't know about you, we were talking about it the other day, weren't we, how it's brought the character alive of the, the people that have actually written the Bible or been in the Bible, and it starts to actually mean that the scriptures mean more to us when we see them as real people, isn't it? Is that sort of you can identify them. Can, you can, you can see the good and the bad in them, and you can see how God used them, so it's a great, they're great passages to use. Um, and uh, so today, I've been asked to talk about Hezekiah. Now, he's a great character, like I said. He built an amazing tunnel, tunnel in Jerusalem. One great memory I have um, is actually, yeah, I, I actually, actually got, got to, to walk through, through Hezekiah's, Hezekiah's tunnel, tunnel when, when I went to Jerusalem. Jerusalem. And it felt quite surreal, actually, at the time. I was walking through a tunnel that's, first of all, mentioned in the Bible. And not only that, it's thousands and thousands of years old. And it was, it was one of those things that I... I don't know, it was just, I really enjoyed doing it and it just meant something to me. It made me feel somehow connected, I think, more with the Bible, more with Hezekiah. Um, you know, Hezekiah was a great character because he, he built this tunnel to bring fresh water to Jerusalem from the spring outside. It's, it says it, um, outside, it, the spring sorry, was outside the walls, so the tunnel brought it into the Jerusalem. It says it's 533 metres 
So I walked quite away that day. It was good for me. Um, he was a king um, who did good to the people. He was a king who did good to the people. He reigned as king for 29 years. He became king of Judah at just 25 years old. A very young king, wasn't he? It says a lot about him too. He was always aware of the living God and of how God was involved in everyday life and everyday events. He was one of those kings that um, oh, was a good king, just a good king who knew God. And that's interesting because of where he came from, actually. And I'm going to say a bit about that in a minute. Hezekiah basically had a good relationship with God. We've been talking a lot we, about having a relationship with God, and that's what it's all about. He's described in the Bible in 2 Chronicles 31.20 as someone who did what was good and right and faithful before the Lord his God. Isn't that a great way to be described? But he was a son of King Ahasar, known to actually be an incredibly wicked man of all things. So the son was very different to the father. His mother was abject, the daughter of the high priest Zechariah. And he was believed to be born about 741 before Christ. Married to I can't say that. There we go. Um, anyway, he died aged about 54. So we get an idea. He didn't really have a long life, but he had a very eventful life and a life where he was really faithful to God. And I was thinking about this. I thought sometimes it's not how long we're given, it's what we do with it, isn't it, that really matters. He's mentioning Kings, Isaiah, Proverbs, Jeremiah, Hosea, and Micah. And his name, Hezekiah, actually means Yahweh is my strength. Great name. Yahweh is my strength. There ought to be more Hezekiahs around, don't you think? So if you're having a baby at the moment, I want to encourage you. Your next one. <laughs> next one. Maybe call him Hezekiah. He's known to, for restoring the temple, getting rid of the idols from the temple and reforming the priesthood. He basically came along and swept everything spiritually clean, if you like. He got rid of everything that had been, well, that his father had put in place, actually, that was bad. He reopened the temple. His father had nailed the, do the doors to the temple shut, and he reopened the temple. And he was opposed, it, sorry, he was the opposite, if you like, to his evil father. So here we have this amazing king in the middle here. He apparently even destroyed the bronze serpent made by Moses. If you go look in the Genesis scriptures, you'll see that serpent being raised up. Uh, because it was a symbol of idol worship in his opinion, so therefore it needed to go. And he's all about worshipping God. His life is an act of worship. That's kind of what we learn from his life is an act of worship. He's renewed, um, and he also renews the significance of the Passover. That had also been lost at this time. Um, it had been neglected, so he renews the whole meaning of the Passover at that time. If you like, this is a real time of revival. Real time of revival. I just wonder if we're now in those times, actually, I think we're in those times of revival. We've been be forced to stay at home, we're forced to, to maybe not worship like we want to, and actually that is when things become more important to you. And I do wonder for Hezekiah whether it was almost more important to him because his father was so anti it. It must be very difficult to grow up in that when actually you have this faith and goodness in you, mustn't it? It's almost like a reaction, if you like. And, I wonder if that now, today, we need to react and just go out there, preach Jesus, be Jesus, and really make a difference in our communities. So Hezekiah was a king who relied on God, and he prayed to him for deliverance. He was a man who loved God, a man who served God, and a man who trusted God. He prospered in everything that he did. And in Kings 2.18, it reads, that he held fast to the Lord and did not stop following him. He kept the commandments the Lord had given to Moses and the Lord was with him. He was successful in whatever he undertook. There's something here, isn't there, and about how we serve God. We see the blessings of God in our life when we really put our life in the hands of the living God. Um, but the scripture read today actually is about Hezekiah because like I say we're all flawed, becoming sick. He has an inflammation, which Isaiah suggests is going to be fatal, as you read. But Hezekiah trusts his God. He actually gets to live another 15 years after this. He was quite a young man even at this point. And he gets to live another 15 years after praying for healing. And the son was born, um, his son was born during this time, um, Manasseh. 
Manister was born at this time. It is believed that the information was a result of dispute between Hezekiah and Isaiah. One disagreement being that the king was refusing to, have, to, to marry and have children. How dare he? And of course, it was really important that the king did have a child to continue. Um, in the end, he actually, actually ends up marrying Isaiah's, Isaiah's daughter, daughter, of all things. Anyway, Isaiah told Hezekiah to prepare to die. Get ready to die. Can you imagine what that felt like at that moment? Get ready to die. But Hezekiah prays and he seeks God. And as a result, Isaiah is then told that Hezekiah will get 15 more years. He's going to be healed. Healed for a time. Wonderful story, isn't it? Wonderful story of faithfulness, God's faithfulness. And how prayer works. I want to see more miracles happen, don't you, in our lives, in, in, in each of our lives here. And in the lives of those I come into touch with. Because our God is a God who can deliver. After his healing, Hezekiah makes a mistake, though. This is where he becomes more flawed. He proudly is showing off the, back to the Babylonians all his treasures. He's like, he's just showing off, basically, isn't he? And Isaiah again rebukes him. And he prophesies that all that he has boasted about and shown the Babylonians will, take, will be taken away from him, including his descendants. So that's quite a, quite a kind of thought moment, isn't it, for him? But after Hezekiah dies, his son, Messiah, becomes king at the age of 12. Imagine a 12 being king. My goodness. But actually, isn't it interesting? He becomes one of the evilest kings ever to reign. So we have this amazing king in the middle who loved God, sandwiched between two of the most evil kings you can imagine. And, um, you know, we need to continually pray, don't we, that God gives us good governance and, uh, you know, we pray that the Lord will raise up Christians in governments and, and raise up the next uh, rulers in this land that actually will really just continue. The Queen has been an amazing ambassador, continue to, to praise God and to reach out to God. And there's a belief, of course, as well, that Messina actually murdered Isaiah. As a prayer, he answers prayer and victory over his enemies as well. But he, like this, is flawed, and his pride leads to consequences. Pride can get in the way of so many things, can't it? I don't know about all of us can be susceptible to pride without even realising it. You know, we suddenly just puff ourselves up, and we don't even realise we're doing it. But what do we learn from Hezekiah? Well, we are reminded once again that God is about relationship. He had a real and living relationship with Hezekiah. And Hezekiah teaches us that it's good and right to be honest. He was an honest king. To not serve idols. Can't have idols in our life. What's your idol? What is it that you worship that takes the place of God? Only worship Jesus. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that our temple must be kept pure. It's really important that we live lives that are, that are honouring to God. And the Holy Spirit has helped us do that. We can't do it by ourselves. That comes out of that relationship I keep talking about with God first, isn't it? Authentic relationship. Authentic relationship with God, seeking him in prayer continually in our life. And you know, prayer isn't hard work. It's about, we sometimes make it hard work, I think, because we think we have something we have to do. It's actually just about including God in your life every day. It's about knowing that God walks with you and being intentional in recognising that God is in your life. It's not about, it's just saying, actually, God's with me in all that I do, wherever I go, whatever I am, he's here. So I want to encourage us today to be like Hezekiah, faithful, talk to Jesus. And remember to give Jesus the glory. It is God in our lives that changes our lives. It's a God in our lives that will change our community, our nation, our church. And never use your power to belittle others or your blessings to make others feel inferior. Let's lift each other up. Whatever we've got doesn't matter as long as we've got the living God, which is the most important thing we can have. As long as we've got the one true God, the one that leads us to healing. And the one that leads us to deliverance. Amen. Amen. Did you like that? Yeah. I yeah. thought it was pretty amazing that, um, in spite of him having an evil father, he managed to live a faith-filled life. 
it's amazing, isn't it? I think, yeah. Yeah, it says a lot, doesn't it? Sometimes we, we don't have to be influenced always by those around us, do we then, in that case? Sometimes. We normally are. We normally are, but we don't have to be. Um, so we remind them, isn't it, not to be influenced by those around us, to be faithful. And I don't know about you, but I can sometimes puff up. You're not even intentionally, you suddenly go, oh, I'm just, you know, and you have to kind of pull it down again, don't you? And remind yourselves, actually, that we only give glory to God. I think this is about worshipping with your life, don't you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Yes. <laughs> Shall we just pray? Was there any prayer requests at all on the Facebook? Does anyone know? No. Okay, I'm just going to pray then and ask you not to just pray whatever God gives you. If anyone here would like to pray out loud, please do. I'll start and then I'll give us some time and then we will um, lead into to the Lord's Prayer at the end. Lord Jesus, thank you and praise you for Hezekiah, for the great character that he, that he was, Lord, for his faith, for the way he trusted you, for the way, Lord, he knew you. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you help us to first and foremost put relationship with you first. And by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, Lord, open us up to know more of you. Open us up to know more of you, we pray, Lord Jesus. Lord, in everything, in everything, by the power of your Holy Spirit, we may know you. Lord, we pray that we will raise up and continue to raise up good and godly governments, monarchy. May we be called by those that know you and love you. We pray for them, Lord, and we pray for, for Boris. We pray, Lord Jesus, for those in government now. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you just come alongside them and strengthen them. We thank you for all that they've done, but we ask, Lord, for more. Lord, that they may know your glory in everything. We pray, Lord Jesus, for all those that are going back to school at this time. We pray, Lord Jesus, for the children, for the young people, for the uncertainty, for the teachers. And we ask, Lord, now that you draw alongside them. Lord, bring them, we pray, Lord Jesus, into your presence in their classrooms. Help them, Lord, to learn. Lord, by the power of your spirit, work through them. We pray for doctors, for nurses, for all those in the hospital. We pray, Lord Jesus, for wisdom there, for those that are just fighting to find an answer to COVID. We pray, Lord Jesus, that there will be a vaccine. There will be a time when we don't have to social distance. We can take our masks off, Lord, and we can just embrace again. Come by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, and be with us. And in this moment, I'll just give you some space now for your own prayers. If you want to pray out loud, please do. If you want to pray in the quiet, please do. And Lord, we continue to pray. Lord, we pray for businesses at this time, those that are struggling. Pray for Kids' Choice here. Pray for the garage next door and the businesses opposite us. And Lord, that they may flourish. Lord, we pray that we may see revival in this land, renewal and healing, restoration, miracles happening day by day. Give us testimonies and stories that change lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. I ask Bradley to lead us in the Lord's Prayer. Thank you, Bradley. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 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 And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you everyone for being with me this morning and for Brian being here with me this morning. Um, just a few notices on the 5th of September, I think it's nine o'clock, isn't it? There's a men's breakfast with Simon yeah. Vincent. It's nine o'clock, isn't it? At Victoria Park, isn't it? So go and meet him there. He's going to give you a word. And just to say that um, 20th of September, there will be uh, 2.30 in the afternoon, will be... Um, Oh, a walk. A walk, a women's walk in Trent Park, meet by the cafe, women. In the evening at seven o'clock, we're going to do an encounter here as well. Uh, just uh, So there will be at seven o'clock an encounter, a chance to come here and just have a time of worship and prayer. We're not quite sure what we're going to do, but we'll do something, even if it's just prayer, just prayer. There's no such thing as just prayer, is there? So we're going to do that. And we have our annual polls with us that day on Sunday morning, so it's really good. Um, next two weeks are uh, going to be great fun. You've got David preaching, Simon speaking, Bob leading, all sorts happening. So I have a really good few weeks. I'm going off to play somewhere for a few weeks and have a bit of a break. <laughs> but um, it would be good to see you all soon. Bless you. Goodbye. <laughs>